does anyone remember the urban legend about the Bunny Man Bridge? If you haven't, it's basically an urban legend surrounding about an escaped mental patient that stalks a series of woods throughout, well, the rest of his life, having escaped from a mental asylum. The legend then goes that if you go underneath that said bridge, entitled Bunny Man's Bridge, on Halloween at a specific time, then you'll be killed by the spirit of the Bunny Man and your mutilated corpse would be hung from the entrance of the bridge for all to see. Pretty dark, right? Now try and imagine the same legend being turned into a cartoon geared towards younger children. Likely chances it really wouldn't get that popular, especially if the whole thing was broadcasted to kids on television at, well, a specific time. Honestly, no matter what the urban legend is, there's likely a slim chance that it would ever be shown on TV without it having to be altered heavily. Well, that is, unless you're a preschool show by the name of Max and Ruby. This may sound insane, but I shit you all not. The original show of Max and Ruby was going to have a full-blown episode dedicated just to this legend alone. Which I guess makes sense, hence the fact that it's about rabbits, and the legend is about, well, the bunny man, and the like. Now originally back in 2007, the whole concept of the bunny man, as well as the bunny man bridge, was going to be condensed down and made into a Halloween special for the show. Now naturally, when this episode was first brought up to cast and crew and writers, it was instantly shut down. Honestly, I don't even think I have even really need to explain the reason why that was the case, but I'll let you all use your imaginations on this one. Of course, a few of the writing staff continued on suggesting the episode be made, one of them continuously asking for it over and over and over again. Almost to the point where everyone in the writing team was so sick of this one guy's constant pestering that they pretty much greenlit the idea just to shut him up. Now, there's already a problem about the whole thing. How the hell do you manage to take a legend that's graphic and fucked up like the Bunny Man Bridge and then turn it into an episode for younger kids? It was a huge risk, to be honest. Actually, it was more along the lines of it being almost impossible without having to change nearly everything about the legend to make it more kid-friendly. Thus, well, completely and utterly ruining the legend in general. Thankfully though, the staff and crew that it came up, the staff and crew, well the person that came up with the concept, and things like that, had gotten it all written down, animated, voice acted, and finally completely and utterly processed as a full episode only for it to be swiftly rejected by the higher-ups, and the man who was responsible for pestering the writers into making this episode, getting fired and blacklisted from many major cartoon corporations. Yeah, it wasn't much of a surprise to most of the writers, and I think a few of them were probably pretty happy about the whole thing, but the man who had gotten terminated from his job because of it was a little bit more than pissed off. This man, who was later identified as John Darwin, ultimately had a huge beef with the company after his termination of his job. He even went so far to post it on social media about the whole thing, about how the animation industry were full of pussies, and other derogatory claims as well, centered around pretty much everyone that worked on the show, the creator, and even the higher-ups. Coming to no shock to anyone, the man's rant was swiftly taken off the internet, and Nickelodeon themselves had their lawyers send in a cease and desist letter to John in order to make sure to stand clear of any kind of defamation suit in the future. Now, did this stop John in any way? Well, yes and no. At least to the extent, you know, throughout the years. From what I've been told by a few colleagues of mine who knew about this man, hence why I know so much about him and the events of the story, he pretty much did the only thing that he could pretty much do at this point. He broke into Nickelodeon Studios, stole the copy of the Bunny Man episode, and made copy after copy after copy of the episode on anything that he could even get his hands on. CDs, DVDRs, VHS tapes, USB drives, and even at one point in time, at least I think, used a fla floppy disk to see whether or not if it would store properly. If that was even possible. Then, as if uh, he hadn't had enough, he then went so far to go out and start selling a few of the CDs and VHS tapes to various vendors and the like, who in turn sold them to people at their store for a couple of bucks. That was how I managed to accidentally acquire a copy of this episode. 
Now, while I still do have the tape in my possession, and I can't exactly really remember where I got it from, it has been some time since I've actually checked to see if this tape still works or not. Likely chances it's already uh, broken beyond repair, due to my neglectful keeping of it throughout the years. And even if it wasn't broken, I likely chances wouldn't even be able to show anything to anyone anyway, due to me possibly getting tracked by, well, the police, and likely arrested on the spot for possession of stolen material. Now, as for the episode itself, it has been a while since I've actually seen it, but I will try my best to describe everything as best as I can that was on this tape, although it is rather difficult. The episode itself started off with the regular intro for Max and Ruby, with the only noticeable difference being the Halloween-themed extras that have been added into the intro itself, most notably the various Halloween decorations that pretty much filled the front and the back of the house as well as the interior of it during the intro. Once the intro ends, the scene then transitions over to show the interior of the home, specifically in Ruby's room with Ruby and Max putting on their costumes. Well, Max? I think we're both about ready to go trick-or-treating now," Ruby said as she placed the diamond-studded tiara on her head to match with her princess dress. Max proceeded to jump up and down in excitement as he pulled out a fake sword from a little holster in his pirate costume and proceeded to swing it around while yelling out, "Arg!" Ruby then giggles at Max's little antics and then proceeds to take Max's hand and they both go out of the room, down the stairs, and then towards the kitchen where a pair of pumpkin jack-o'-lantern buckets are awaiting them. Don't want to forget about these, Max, Ruby said, handing her younger brother a bucket. We wouldn't be able to hold up our all of our candy if we ever get them. Upon making sure that the two had their buckets and that it wasn't broken in any way, Ruby then proceeded to go up to a small drawer, open it up, and pull out a small notepad with a little checklist written on it, and then proceed to start checking off various things to make sure that they had everything that they needed. Okay, Max, let's check everything off to make sure we haven't forgotten anything. Ruby began. Let's see. Flashlights? Max then held up a pair of flashlights in his hands and nodded. Check. Candy buckets? Ruby said once again. Max, on cue, held up the buckets and nodded again. Check. And lastly, our cell phone that Grandma gave us to call her up if we need her. Ruby said once more. Check, Max said as he held up the small flip phone in his hand before putting it back into his pocket. Well, that should do it for us now, Max. Now let's go get some candy, Ruby said, placing the checkbook down onto the kitchen counter. The two bunnies then proceeded to make their way out of the door and into the cool autumn and into the cool autumn air, and they started making their way to a few houses, which ones they were, I really don't remember. The scene then proceeds to go on for a good portion of the episode, and since I can't really recall everything during that specific scene, I'll just get into the parts that really freaked me out when I had watched it the first time around. Sometime during the trick-or-treating, Ruby's friend Louise had came up to Max and Ruby, and then, after a little bit of chatting, accompanied the both of them on their trick-or-treating venture. It's now that the sun had now started, up, started to set, and a soft fog overlapped the area. Max, Ruby, and Louise then started making their way back home, until they wind up taking a wrong turn due to the fog, and started going down a rather dark dirt path that led to a large bridge with a huge opening in the middle of it that overlapped the scene in two different places. Ruby is immediately surprised by this and then proceeds to turn to Louise and ask, Uh, Louise, I think we took a wrong turn, Ruby said, now slightly frightened. Yeah, I think we did, but why does this bridge look so familiar? Louise said as she placed a hand on her chin to kind of figure out what it was. It didn't take long for her eyes to immediately light up and a smile to plaster itself on her face. Ruby, do you know what this place is? Louise asked excitedly. Uh, no, I don't. Why? And more importantly, why is there a bridge out here? Ruby asked. Well, Ruby, this bridge is home to the Bunny Man. Louise answered. Ruby, now confused as all hell, asked Louise what the Bunny Man was. Now, like I said before, I really can't remember everything about what exactly she said, and the legend in general, but... If I could recall a couple of clips from it, 
It likely was that Luis had mentioned something about the bunny man being a crazy person who ate bunnies' candies on Halloween each year, yet they stood underneath the bridge for a long period of time. This, of course, freaked out Ruby a little bit, and she began to, in an instant, start running away from the bridge, leaving Max and Luis behind. Luis simply rolled her eyes at this and then proceeded to follow after her, giggling as she did. She soon wound up catching up to her whenever Ruby was pretty much out of breath. Come on, Ruby, it's not real. It's just a dumb old legend that some older bunnies made up to keep younger bunnies from going down this trail, Louise said, chuckling. Well, still, that bridge is creepy. And that it isn't funny either, Ruby said, pouting a bit. Oh, come now, Ruby, you can't tell me that you're scared of this old legend, are you? Louise asked. Well, if you were under a bridge with a crazy bunny wanting to eat you and your candy, then yes, I'd be scared, Ruby said as she huffed and turned around. <sighs> Ruby, for one, he's not going to eat anyone. That's not what the legend says. And second of all, let's just go back home and we'll have a little Halloween sleepover tonight. Sound good? Louise asked. Well, Ruby said, I'll make us my famous Halloween brownies, Louise said. Okay, that sounds good. Come on, Max, let's go home, Ruby said as she reached out for her brother's hand, but immediately froze when she felt nothing. Uh, Louise, where's Max at? Ruby asked, her voice starting to panic a little. Oh, well, whenever you ran off, I went to go and find you, and I left him at the bridge. Louise was about to say something, but the faint sound of insane laughter and the crunching of hard candies played out, causing both Luis and Ruby to freeze in their spots. What? What? What was that? Luis asked, now shaking. I don't know, but whatever that was, we gotta go and get Max, Ruby said as she sprinted towards the direction that she had ran in. Hey, wait, wait for me, Luis called out as she ran after her best friend. The two continued to run rather quickly out of the wooded area. The sound of the insane bout of laughter and the candy crunching sound started to get louder and louder as they neared towards the cave. Once they had finally arrived at the bridge's location, they both proceeded to start calling out Max's name, even going us so far to try and look for him, getting closer and closer to the bridge as they did so. It's then that, after the twelfth call, Ruby then proceeded to look inside of the bridge's, well, main gap, only to find Max sitting inside the bridge eating his candy. Max! There you are! You had me worried sick! Come on, Max, let's get out of here. Let's go. Ru Ru Luis is going to make her famous brownies, Ruby, Ruby said. Max simply said nothing and continued to eat his candy. As he did, a figure of what I assumed was the bunny man slowly started making his way towards the young rabbit. Now, his actual appearance, more or less, was definitely something, to say the least. In fact, it was something that I wasn't even really expecting. Thinking about it now, it downright horrified me, and it still does to this day. Now, this is the thing about the Bunny Man itself. You know how whenever the show usually airs and things like that and all the characters act in like a rather stoic kind of motion, as though all the animation parts on it are rather forced to an extent? Well, the Bunny Man was an exception to that rule. In fact, I would say that his entire demeanor was the exact exception. Basically what I'm saying is th think about the animation that's within the Max and Ruby show and the animation with say adventure time with everything being like extremely loose and fluid and everything that was pretty much what the bunny man was except in this kind of form which given the rather stoic nature of the episode itself only furthered made the bunny man a lot creepier than he should have been his eyes were probably the biggest out of his entire head probably i think about as big as a fist more or less his eyes were pretty much crazed, and his mouth was completely full of candy and cavities last time I checked. Ugh, God, it was absolutely disgusting. But 
Yeah, his face looked about as crazed as crazed could be, and his mouth always continuously opened and closed as he laughed, and candies of all sorts completely spat out of his mouth in a disgusting manner. Ruby, seeing this guy making his way closer and closer to her little brother, immediately began running after her brother, who, unbeknownst to him, was about to possibly be food for the psychopath. Ruby continued to run, but the bunny man ran faster. Ruby literally did everything that she possibly could try and do to get Max's attention, yelling at him, telling him to leave, even going as so far to threaten punishment if he didn't comply with her demands, like taking away his big red elephant or taking away his toys. All of which didn't even bother getting to Max. He didn't look up, he just kept eating his candy. It was as if he couldn't even hear her at all, despite her getting closer and closer to him. Unfortunately for Ruby though, she didn't make it in time. The bunny man had actually came and showed himself right next to him, right next to Max, who now looked up at the man, and his face looked completely and utterly fearful. His pupils grew tiny, and he struggled to move away. The scene then cut back to Ruby, who practically stood there in horror, as the sudden screaming of Max rang out off screen. Ruby could only watch as the bunny man's insane bout of laughter turned into the sound of him opening up his mouth and swallowing Max whole. Still off screen, but from what I do remember, it was more or less in a shadow kind of way. There really wasn't any crunching or anything, just a comedic swallow. It didn't exactly last too long before it finally cut to show the bunny man himself with a large belly, laughing like crazy and then proceeding out to let out a large burp before taking the, taking the last of the candy that was inside of Max's bag and then making his way back deeper into the cave, or in this case, the bridge. Now, after that, Ruby herself then proceeds to get pretty particularly angry, and then she immediately starts running after the bunny man with Luis following behind her. Now, the rest of that episode after that was a bit of a blur as I think I likely turned the thing off after the part where Ruby and Luis were running after the bunny man. But looking back at it, at least I now have an understanding as to why the whole thing was banned to begin with. In fact, it's kind of un it's likely chances that it was probably made that way just so it could get banned. I mean, think about it. All these people having to continuously me have to deal with this pestering asshole of a, of a writer and then ultimately finally going into it, of course, they're likely to make something that wouldn't even be shown to kids. I mean, the entire concept was completely and utterly thrown under the bus entirely. I mean, it would only just seem natural for them to sit there and, you know, get try and do what they can to get the episode banned as best as they could. Although, even, although when I think about it, it's kind of a waste of resources. But I think the disturbing thing about this was the fact that Max had gotten eaten by that sugar-high craved rabbit. Like, Jesus Christ, thinking about it was about as disturbing. In fact, it's a lot more disturbing now than it was when I first watched it. Now, it's likely possible that the episode ended on a really happy kind of manner, like most shows on Nick Jr. tend to do throughout each episode. And, of course, it's likely that Max was fine the whole time, and, of course, Ruby managed to get him back, and they all wind up becoming friends or something at the end. However, I'm not likely going to be able to find that out, as, like I said before, the tape was pretty much damaged. If I can ever get a copy of this episode again, if they're still being sold by this person, then I'll make sure of it to update this post with the actual ending of it as soon as I'm able to. Until then, though, that's pretty much all I can remember. But I'm gonna do everything that I possibly can to make sure of it that I get this, uh, that I get another tape of this, or at least I get it cleaned or something, and be able to properly give a better ending to this. So yeah, wish me the best of luck, because honestly, I'm gonna need every ounce of it. In fear and surprise, as your eyes widen. Your mouth goes dry with each battered breath. You try to scream, your mind begs to be 
glued to your computer screen. The killers they slash, the tapes burn and crash. The cartridge you bought will be your final haunt. The rituals of hate will seal your fate. The tears you shed will be from a fear gripping portrait nightmarish gore filled, terrorizing hateful, burning violent, rage inducing knives slashing, blood splattering, silent screams. Only time will tell if you will escape this online hell. Your horror-filled obsessions will come with its own regressions. Your pathetic screams will not be heeded in any way. Because your nightmares will come at any day.